The film you are about to see is intended to provide guidance to future developers and builders regarding the impact of the Canmore Mines activities on the Three Sisters lands. The Three Sisters properties extend from Canmore to Wind Valley on the southwest side of the Bow River. The land was previously owned by Canmore Mines Limited, who, after nearly a century of continuous coal production, closed in 1979. In 1992, following public hearings by the Alberta Natural Resources Conservation Board, permission was granted to develop the property as a resort along clearly stated principles. The NRCB report identified four main areas of concern related to development on mined land. Undermining, which they correctly regarded as particularly significant, water-related hazards, methane gas, and fire in the coal seams. The report strongly recommended that an undermining review group be established to review applications for development. The report stated that the board considers that it was fortunate to have received evidence from individuals who have personal knowledge of the Canmore mines, such as Mr. Stevenson and Mr. Hamela. The years since 1992 have seen several changes of owners, and all have faced significant challenges in financing development. During this time, the town has been committed to working with various developers, and in 2004, approved an area structure plan for a resort center on the Three Sisters lands. Over the last 30 years, there have been numerous developers and bankruptcies. The most recent developer went bankrupt in 2009, and PricewaterhouseCoopers was appointed as the receiver. In the first half of 2013, in an attempt to add value to the property, the receiver submitted a revised area structure plan proposal, which included construction of residential units on the unfinished golf course. The proposal met with strong opposition from many sectors of the Canmore community. As of September 2013, the property is out of receivership, and the current owners, who have owned the property in the past, are hoping to move forward with development. It is Canmore's community desire that the owners be responsible stewards of the land, adhering to the principles and values of this community, taking into consideration the expertise offered in this film, as well as providing for a functional wildlife corridor. Jerry Stevenson is a mining engineer who has worked for over 60 years in the coal industry, and he's lived in Canmore for 44 years. Jerry was chief engineer of Canmore Mines Limited for six years. During the 70s, he was responsible for the reclamation and recreational development work on Canmore's mined land, including the design and construction of Quarry Lake described by the Alberta Environmental Conservation Authority as the best mine reclamation in Western Canada. In 1979, he was a founder and president of Norwest Resource Consultants Limited. For a 10-year period beginning in 1989, Jerry directed Norwest's work on the undermining aspects of the Three Sisters property. He also carried out work for the province and the town regarding mining hazards on municipal and crown-owned land. Mining conditions at the Canmo mines were very, very complicated, largely due to the complex geology. And this outcrop here is indicative of the kind of strata and the gradients that we encountered underground and made mining very difficult. I've worked in over 30 countries and visited and worked in probably 300 mines in the course of my career and I've never seen anything anywhere as complex as this. The gradients vary from flat to 90 degrees and then every angle in between. And the amount of faulting, even in this short 50 metre stretch, there are three significant faults. So for the mining engineer, the manager and the miner, this was a very complex mining operation. In the area occupied by the Three Sisters lands, as many as seven underground mines operated between 1886 and 1979 when the last mine closed. 
And behind me here, this portal is actually the entrance to a tunnel which accessed number two mine and was used to operate in three individual seams. The workings in the mines range from workings which were very close to the surface to depths of 250 meters. The layouts of the mines were very irregular as we can see on the mine plans and that was because the coal seams themselves were faulted and twisted and bent. Up to four individual seams were mined in some areas, one above the other. And the extraction rate, that is the amount of coal in place that was actually taken out by mining, ranged from as low as 20% to as high as 80%. And one of the difficulties in carrying out mitigation is to know whether the extraction rate was low or high. And it's not possible from the mine plans to determine that. Canmore Mines Limited did carry out some surface mining where the overburden is taken off and the coal is extracted from the surface. These were very small mines and all of them were reclaimed in the late 60s and early 70s. From a development point of view, however, it's important to remember that when the surface mines were filled and reclaimed, there was no thought of residential or other kinds of development. So the surface now is very often quite unstable. In 1989, I was contacted by Rick Melchin, who was president of a company called Three Sisters Golf Resorts Incorporated. And he had recognized that he needed help in identifying the hazards that existed to various forms of development on his property. We started that work in 1989 and worked on the project for 10 years until the year 2000. Uh, our first task was to collect information on the property and the main thing was to get together the mine plans of which there were over 300. We then established the hazard zones that might exist on the property at various levels, high constraint, medium constraint and low constraint. And these were used by Rick Melchin to prepare his development plans for types of development that would suit the degree of constraint. Norwest worked on two separate subdivisions for Three Sisters. Homesteads was the first and the second was Peaks of Grassy. And we found that there was very little impact from underground mining on both of those. We then looked at an hotel site for the Wildmark Hotel and found that we could identify the workings uh, very easily and we found good solid ground for that hotel. The most dangerous areas from the point of view of residential development were considered appropriate for golf courses. The first being Stewart Creek and the second being the Three Sisters incomplete golf course. Both of these required extensive and costly mitigation. What we're seeing here is the incomplete Three Sisters golf course that was built by a previous company. One of the problems that Norwest faced when we began this project was that we couldn't find any instance anywhere in the world where anybody else had developed on such complex mine workings in steep seams and in such a mountainous area. So in effect, we had to start from scratch. When you tackle a project like this, you find that you've got two categories of hazard to deal with. The first, of course, is the instability of the surface caused by the shallow and steep mine workings. And the second, which is equally dangerous, is the existence of old caves where the workings have come to the surface, caused it to collapse, or the shafts, or the tunnels that have come to the surface. And many of these, since they were remnants of mine workings from 70 and 80 years ago, they've been overgrown, they're very difficult to find, and the result is that you have to do a lot of exploration to find out where these hazards are. When you're looking at the potential for instability on the surface caused by underground mine workings, 
really five factors you have to look at. The first is the thickness of the seam that has been mined. Obviously the thicker the seam, the more unstable the surface is. Secondly, you have to look at the depth of the seam. If it's been mined very close to the surface, that's a much worse situation than when it's been deep down below. The third one is the amount of extraction that has taken place. Obviously, the higher the rate of extraction, the more instability you have. And the fourth one is the gradient of the seam. Vertical or steep workings cause much more instability than do flat seams. And the last one of all, if you have more than one seam being mined, maybe two or three even in the one area, you'll have more instability. On the area owned by Three Sisters, approximately 40 to 50% of that area has been undermined in either one, two or three seams. And the big problem is that those workings are very old, 60 to 80 years ago, and there's no access to them. They're flooded and you can't get into them to see the impact of your mitigation. An area like that is the unfinished Three Sisters golf course and that area was very heavily undermined in as many as three seams and was mitigated for a golf course, but would not be suitable, certainly not for residences. The area you see here has been very heavily undermined in two or three seams. When Norwest was working on this project in the mid nineties, we strongly recommended to the owner that this area should not be developed for residential housing but for a golf course. Then the work was taken over by Goulder Associates and they, in a 2002 report, agreed with that recommendation. And the new owners accepted that advice and they went ahead and built this incomplete golf course, the Three Sisters Golf Course. They did not want residential housing on it. When I came to the area in 1968, when I looked at this area, what I saw was a vertical slot about 40 or 50 feet wide and very deep, perhaps 100 feet deep. It had been surface mined using backhoes going down and the surface mine had encountered underground mines that had come up. That made it very dangerous. And when it was backfilled, there was no thought of development of any kind on this property and a great amount of loose timber was simply bulldozed back into that pit. That timber would decompose and would allow settlement. And that's one of the reasons why this area in particular should only be used for a golf course and certainly not for residential housing. In 2013, the receiver, Pricewaterhouse Coopers, submitted a new area structure plan. And the main feature of this was that the Three Sisters golf course, which was almost complete, would be abandoned as a golf course and residential pods would be placed on that land. The receiver felt at that time that that would add value to the property. However, there were very many negative aspects to the proposal. One of them was the quite dangerous mining conditions on that land which had been mitigatable for a golf course at not an undue cost, but the mitigation for residential purposes would have been very difficult, very costly, and would not have 100% security when it was complete. But another problem was the wildlife corridor that lay adjacent to that golf course. That wildlife corridor is very narrow at that point, and the golf course had the effect of improving the operation of the wildlife corridor. Without the golf course and houses substituted, that wildlife corridor would be severely compromised. In fact, a Golders report written in 2002 said exactly that, that residences were the last thing that should be built on that land. This photo, which was taken in 1984, shows an old portal into the Morris seam. This portal was immediately adjacent to the second fairway on the Stuart Creek Golf Course, which at that time was under construction. The portal was actually driven a long time ago 
in the 1930s. And it was still partially open and it was possible to enter and go into the Morrison workings for a very short distance. In 1972, I was the chief engineer for Canmore Mines Limited. And at that time, we were mining the Stewart Seam at this location. We mined from below up, upwards to the gravel. And then we stopped mining, of course. And that gravel did not collapse. It was quite strong. And for 30 or 40 years, the surface here remained stable and there was no sinkhole. Suddenly, quite recently, this sinkhole has occurred as the gravel collapsed into those vertical workings. And that expansion of the sinkhole and collapse will continue. You can see grass down at the bottom of the sinkhole and it will continue until things stabilize. The important thing to remember here is that this seam was mined along a line in this direction and although the surface now appears totally solid, in fact it's very unstable. And at any time, a sinkhole like this one could appear along the line of this seam. One of the projects we did for Three Sisters was to look at this parkway here. There were some problems with that because it passed over quite a lot of mine workings. At three particular points, it passed over vertical workings, which had come right up to the surface. One location just here was particularly difficult. When we exposed it, we found a ver vertical slot that was four meters wide and of unknown depth. So we drilled into it, explored it, and found that it was about 100 meters deep. It was partially full of coal and debris and so on, and it was flooded to within very close to the surface. So to deal with that too, we had to make a solid plug which could be fitted into the top of the cavity to support the road. And we made the plug out of concrete, geotextile, and large boulders. And we shaped it into a wedge shape like this. The idea being that as it settled under its own weight, it would tighten up and make a more secure seal. So the parkway was built over that and we were pretty happy with it. But several years later, the road collapsed. And the reason it collapsed was that a water main had been laid through the area, the water lane had burst, and the water from the main had actually washed out the sides of the cavity, loosened the plug, which settled down about two meters and collapsed the road. And I guess the lesson in this for all of us, for me certainly, was that even if you've done all the engineering you think is necessary, even if you've spent quite a lot of money, you still, in dealing with steep and shallow workings, you're never 100% safe. It might be worthwhile talking about the responsibilities and liabilities that are incurred when a sinkhole like this or the one on Durgis Gate appear. When the province took over that responsibility, the town's understanding was that any costs incurred for this kind of thing would be met by the province. But it now appears that may not always be the case. And we would respectfully suggest that the town and the province need to discuss this thoroughly to ensure that the costs of this type of mitigation after construction has occurred do not fall on either the provincial taxpayer or the town taxpayer. In fact, in 1997, a special regulation was brought forward and passed as part of the Municipalities Act. And that regulation, I think, was entitled the Canmore Undermining Regulation. And what it stipulated was that the developer who was built on mined land must carry insurance for that property for a length of time and a value that is satisfactory to the minister. The same regulation also said that on each one, a caveat had to be inserted into the registration of the land so that the owner was aware of the mining situation. My family have been in the coal mining business for seven generations 
as miners, as engineers, and as managers. So I've lived in coal mining towns all my life, all over the world. I came to Canmore with my family in 1968, and the main street wasn't even paved. There were only a thousand people in town, but there was a wonderful community spirit. Just exactly what you'd expect in a coal mining town. But in addition, we had a bonus. We had these mountains, these rivers, the lakes, and most particularly, we had the wildlife, even in our backyards. Now it's 2013, we still have our mountains, and we still have that community spirit. And we'd like to keep it that way. We recognize the, that the owner of Three Sisters Lands has a right to develop in a sustainable way and to make a profit out of it. But he also has an obligation, and that obligation is to maintain that same and enhance that same community spirit. And we believe it's very much in the owner's interest to keep it that way. The new owner, having worked in this area for many years, will surely recognise the value of the expertise here in Canmore, particularly expertise on environmental matters and most particularly on wildlife corridors. He'll also recognise the problems from shallow workings in the area. There have been four instances in the Canmore area of collapses which have occurred under or near buildings and infrastructure. In other words, mitigation is not perfect. For example, the Three Sisters golf course area was selected right from the beginning as a golf course because of mining problems. And as a golf course, it would have tremendous benefit for the adjacent wildlife corridor. Development of the Three Sisters lands since the 1980s has been characterized mainly by boom and bust cycles. The owners have changed four times due to financial problems. And each time there have been job losses in Canmore, some creditors have gone unpaid, and town council and their staff have been left dealing with a new owner and a new plan. I think that the new owner might very well consider some advice given in 1905 by George Santayana. He was a philosopher. He wasn't a developer, but his advice certainly applies to the Three Sisters lands. Those who do not study history are condemned to repeat it.